It's like a chartreuse. You know, I just read an article in jail. They paint everything pink because it has a common effect. Yeah. So, Pink's common. Pink may be coming. Pe Pepto business. <laughs> No, oh, it's Mateo. Move that. No, he's not coming tonight. Um, Nalima, do you have anything for executive tonight or no? I do. Do you have something? Okay. All right. Shouldn't be long. Okay. You guys good? You good? Yeah. Oh, oh, Kathy's on her way. Kathy's not here. Oh, Kathy's not here tonight. Oh, even better. Okay. Oh, yeah. We're money hats again. All right. All right. Good. All right. Good evening. Welcome to this evening's November first public council meeting. A roll call, please. Councilwoman Skavich. Here. Councilman Zakelli? Here. Councilwoman Peterson? Here. Deputy Mayor Masseri is uh, excused for this evening. Mayor Tanella? Here. Please rise for the flag salute. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Adequate notice of this meeting was duly provided to the Verona Cedar Grove Times and the Star Ledger by email and published in an annual schedule of meetings dated December 24, 2020, filed with the Township Clerk and posted on the public bulletin board in the Municipal Building Lobby in accordance with the Open Public Meeting Act. Um, first item of business is to uh, award a business, award a bid, to consider a resolution concerning award a bid for reconstruction of ADA ramps. Make a motion to approve, Mayor. Um, is there a second? Under discussion, uh, um, Council, do you want to address this? Uh... Mayor, certainly. We reviewed the bid bonds that were submitted. Covino was the lowest bidder. Unfortunately, their bid documents, specifically the bid bond, was deficient. So therefore, we recommend uh, awarding the next lowest bidder. I believe it's only a difference of about $200 or so. Okay. So, uh, Councilman, you want to amend? You want to amend your motion to? It should say A. A. Burns. Is that the, the second a. A. lowest? A. A. Burns. You want to yeah. So uh, I'll make a motion to approve as amended to the qualified bidder. Okay. Qualified low bidder. Second. Second. Any further discussion? Roll call, please. Councilwoman Skadich. Thank you. Yes. Councilman Zakali. Yes. Councilwoman Peterson. Yes. Mayor Tanella. Here. Item three, the meeting is now open to residents of the township wishing to be heard on any item on the agenda. There'll be another um, portion for residents to talk about anything off the agenda. Anybody wishing to be heard? All right, seeing none, I move that, I'll move on. Um, reports of township officials. Mr. Tucci, uh, good, good evening. Good evening, Mayor. A few items for this evening. I uh, just want to give you an update on the creation of the Verona Cedar Grove uh, Flood Board. I spoke to uh, Matt Cavallo manager in Verona. We both have drafts of the ordinance which will create the, uh, the flood board. Hopefully you're going to have that uh, draft by in two weeks at our staff meeting and hopefully we'll introduce an ordinance creating this flood board by the first meeting in December. Uh, we'll give you a draft this way the governing body can review it, have any comments on, the, on its creation. It's going to be somewhat similar to the free previous flood board we were in. Uh, the only thing, the verbiage will be a little bit different. So. And Mr. Tucci, because we're more similarly situated to Verona, we'll have a better opportunity at receiving grant monies or any other type of relief from the state or federal entities? Uh, that's correct. And the other uh, op option, and actually it will be worked to our favor, is the fact that it will be two Essex County communities. Mm -hmm. And we'll be able to work through our community development block grant program and the county executive in the future for, for flooding uh, dollars. Thank you. Uh, second, just an update on the Peckman River cleaning and desnagging. Uh, we are finally up um, uh, the area near Community Park Road and in behind in the 14 residents that were here uh, addressing the issue. Uh, the banks are being reestablished. The silt in the bed has been somewhat removed. I believe they've got a good two feet or so. Uh, they're almost approaching the old tennis courts at this point, and like that, it reported that uh, we will continue until we hit Ozone Avenue. We're working down. A lot of the shoals were taken out. A areas where the water was meandering because of the shoals, now the water is in the uh, footprint of the river now, and it was flowing somewhat uh, freely, and hopefully it'll be uh, much better. 
Also, I had the opportunity to talk to the mayor of Little Falls, and Mr. Uh, mayor Damiano, who was very pleased with the work that we were doing. He was asking, uh, and also, I, when I spoke to Macavallo and Verona, it, it appears that they're going to be hiring the same contractor that Woodland Park, Little Falls, and Cedar Grove used, and they're going to continue the uh, cleaning and desnagging of the Peckman River in their community. So it seems like it's a bit contagious at this point. Uh, the maintenance on the Peckman, but it's all good news at this point. Mr. Tucci, with, with regard to that, two, two points. Um, down by the old tennis courts, did they look at the, um, one of the residents who was, who was here, look at the, um, uh, the surroundings over there? You know how it drops off? Yes. As, um, as a matter of fact, Mayor, I was out there with the contractor and mm -hmm. our town engineer based on the comments that were here. We're going to be reestablishing that whole bank creating a slope there. What, all the spoils from that bank are now in the bed. Right. They're going to be taking them back out and reestablishing the bank there. As a matter of fact, there are a few areas where it ate into the bank and into the resident's property. We're going to try to reestablish some of those areas also. Okay. And then also with regard to... Um, I believe that was Mrs. Price's property. Price, correct. Okay. And then with regard to um, Little Falls Road um, in the county, what's, what, what, is there an update with regard to uh, that uh, county, second catch basin we were talking yeah, about installing? The county has hired the uh, National Water Main to do the cleaning of the pipe. Mm -hmm. As soon as that's done, they already hired a contractor to put the second basin in. Okay, good. I, I don't have the exact dates because of the workload. I don't know what the schedule is. Okay. At this point. And I don't know if I'm jumping ahead of you. You're going to go over to Lindsay. Are you Are you going to go into the meeting with the county? Is there? Yeah, I'm yeah. going okay. to report go on ahead. that in our county. All right, I'll let you go. Also. All right, go ahead. You always cut me off. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm anxious. Uh, next item I have just a report on the breast cancer awareness program that we have. First of all, can't say enough about our recreation director, Marissa Landolfi. Did a fabulous job along with Ken McKenna, the head of Manette's Angels, who actually uh, really helped a whole lot. I mean, the crowd was outstanding. Uh, as Councilwoman Skates will tell you, it was above and beyond what we expected. Uh, the big thing is we collected close to $14,000 for Manette's wow. Angels, which is a local organization. I think the total number at this point was $13,947.67. So for everybody who participated was all involved, thank you very much. And again, a big thank you to uh, uh, Marisa Landolfi for a great job. It seems like every year that event continues to grow mm -hmm. and we're able to um, receive more donations. Mm -hmm. Now we're on to uh, want to report on the council and I had a meeting with the county engineer and county council regarding the uh, flooding issues along uh, Mountain Avenue and West Lindsley. Uh, we talked about the developments up in West Caldwell. Uh, the county has committed to doing some work and improvements along that culvert that goes under Mountain Avenue. I believe they're going to put some uh, stone on the upside to try to slow down the velocity of the water coming from the upside of the hill. They're going to be uh, fixing their pipe, their outfall structure, and also filling in some of the ravine only up to a certain distance, though, because they can't go too far in. Mm -hmm. The county council said uh, they, they can't go that far, but there are going to be improvements made there, and they're setting up a timetable. Also, along that line, uh, our, our town engineer did meet with the county engineer and Mr. Nunez and a few of the residents there uh, Friday morning just to go over the details of what's going to be done. Good. So the residents are kept in the loop. I don't know if uh, our council wants to add anything to, uh, to the meeting. Described it perfectly. Great. That's good news. And I have one item for confidential session. Uh, it's regarding uh, contract litigation regarding Occidental chemical lawsuit. That's all I have. Thank you, uh, Mr. Ducci. Council, any? Uh, no, no, wait. You got a clerk's report. Oh, okay. You, you're, you're really making me work tonight, aren't you? She's not here. I thought she, she was going to Well, she left me a message. Okay. I had to say this. <laughs> <laughs> Just want to remind everybody tomorrow is election day. Everybody, please get out and vote. Uh, our, all our election sites are on our website. If you don't know where you vote, just go on the site, and if you, you plug your address in, you'll be able to find out what the polling location. That's all I have. Now you can go. Through. All right. All right. Ms. Nabby, any, uh, any report? Mayor, thank you. No report. I have one item for closed session. Okay.
what is that? Um, potential litigation. Potential litigation. Okay. Thank you. All right. Council reports. Councilwoman Peterson. Good evening. Mayor. Good evening. I do not have a report. No report. Councilwoman Scabbage. Um, no, I just want to emphasize what uh, Mr. Tucci said about um, the Real Panthers Wear Pink event and the tremendous work that Marisa did to put that event on. Um, every year it does get bigger and better. Um, and it was really a, a special night for Cedar Grove. So I wanted to thank her for that. Great. That's it, Mayor. Thank you. Councilman Segelli. No report, Mayor. No report? <laughs> okay, we're moving along. I don't have a report either. So we're moving on to the consent agenda, item five, um, A, to consider a resolution concerning approval of raffle application for St. Catherine of Siena, HSA. So move, Mayor. I'll second that. Any discussion? Roll call, please. So we had uh, Councilman Zichelli. I move it, yes. Yes. Okay. Councilwoman Skavich. Yes. Councilman Zichelli. Yes. Councilwoman Peterson. Yes. Mayor Tanel. Yes. Item B, to consider resolution concerning approval of raffle application for CG Elks Club. So moved, Mayor. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Councilwoman Skavich. Yes. Councilman Zichelli. Yes. Councilwoman Peterson. Yes. Mayor Tanel. Yes. Item uh, six, new business, A, to consider res uh, consider in introduction of pending ordinance 2182, an ordinance adopting redevelopment plan for block 280, lots 247, 320, 330, 551.01, and 552. Mayor, I move, um Move introduction of pending ordinance number 21-882 to be published in full in the Verona Cedar Grove Times as a pending ordinance with a public hearing scheduled for December 6, 2021. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? Roll call, please. Councilwoman Skavich. Yes. Councilman Zakali. Stain. Councilwoman Peterson. Yes. Mayor yes. Item B, to consider introduction of pending ordinance 21883, an ordinance setting maximum allowable rent increase. Mayor, I move introduction of pending ordinance number 21-883 to be published in full in the Verona Cedar Grove Times as a pending ordinance with a public hearing scheduled for December 6, 2021. Is there a second? Second that, Mayor. A roll call? <coughs> Councilwoman Skavich? Yes. Councilman Zichelli? Yes. Councilwoman Peterson? Yes. Mayor Tanella? Yes. Item C, to consider a resolution concerning 2021 best practices inventory. I'll make a motion to approve, Mayor. And I'll second that, Mayor. Any discussion? Uh, yes, Mayor. Best practices inventory is a listing of items that the state of New Jersey uh, requires townships to attain. And there's a rating and a score. I believe the top score is 25 points. Uh, if you get anything over 15 points, all your state funding remains intact. If you get anything less, it gets decreased by a certain percentage. I'm happy to say the cash procedure, I believe, we have a score of 20. So all our uh, state funding will be intact and uh, will, will remain. Excellent. Thank you, Mr. Tucci. Any other comment? Roll call, please. Councilman Zichelli? Yes. Councilwoman Skavich? Yes. Councilwoman Peterson? Yes. Mayor Tanella? Yes. Item 6D, to consider a resolution concerning form, maturities, and other details of refunding bonds. So move, Mayor. Is there a second? Second. Any discussion? A roll call, please. Councilwoman Skavich? Yes. Councilman Zichelli? Yes. Councilwoman Peterson? Yes. Mayor Tanella? Yes. Item 60, to consider resolution concerning execution of temporary access and construction easements agreements for properties on Little Falls Road. So moved, Mayor. Second. Is there any discussion? A roll call, please. Councilwoman Skavich. Yes. Councilman Zichelli. Yes. Councilwoman Peterson. Yes. Mayor Tanella. Yes. Item 7, approval of bills. Just one yes. on that. Uh, just uh, we almost have all the uh, access agreements back. Uh, we did have one that was modified and marked up. Because of that modification, we will probably not be using that because the terms as set by council in the agreement are what the terms are. Either you accept them or not. You can't modify them. We can't have one different set for each different. So the one individual that marked it up and was different 
we'll still be doing the work behind mm -hmm. their home. It's just that we will not be utilizing their property. Right. And you had indicated that before yes, with the did. residents. We may not get some of them back right. or if they're more marked up, but we can right. still go ahead and do the work. Still going ahead and doing the work. Thank you, Mr. Tucci. Um, okay, item seven, approval of bills. Make a motion to approve, Mayor. Second. Mr. Tucci, do you, um, do you have that introductory statement that Ms. Dutch usually reads on that, or you're all right? No, we're good. We're good? Okay, good. All right. So we have a motion. We have a second. Is there any discussion? A roll call, please. Councilwoman Miscavige. Yes. Councilman Zichelli. Yes. Councilwoman Peterson. Yes. Mayor Chanel. Yes. Okay, the meeting is now open to residents of the township wishing to be heard on any item on or off the agenda concerning township business. Anybody wishing to be heard? Yes, please come forward. State your name and address, please. Hi, Spencer Suchaporimus, 201 Little Falls Road. Good evening. Hi, how are you guys? Good, good. Um, so thank you again. The work we've been seeing is just incredible. I, am, I go to bed pretty late, so uh, to have been woken up, woken up by the sound of the excavator, it's just music to my ears. So thank you, and to see the river is basically a brand new river, and the water flow so so much better. Um, it's 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 amazing. So, uh, with that said, I know Mr. Tuji just mentioned uh, about the drain that's going to be added. I can't wait for that. Uh, as you can tell, uh, last week that's another example of how the one drain just couldn't handle it. Uh, the other thing that I've noticed too, the holes of that drain. Uh, I don't know the right term, but um, they're quite small. It works fantastically as a, as a sifter. That's why everything's caught, you know, and then once the leaves cover the grate, uh, the water has nowhere else to go. So, and I've seen in other towns, I was just in Nashville, and I started noticing their drains. They have much bigger holes, and I know safety is a concern, but right. the, the drains I saw there looked perfectly fine. So maybe if we can get a little bit bigger, um, Holes, you know, so I, again, I don't know the right terminology. Remember, it's something that the county is going to be providing too, but it's something the engineer could speak with him about. Yeah. Speak yeah. with them about. I know we could talk to him about right. it. Right. The reason why, just so you know, why the great holes are so small, right. it's for bicycle safety. If you're riding a bicycle and you hit it, but you know, we, we could talk I got to him you. about yeah. that and see. What I just else. feel like if you get a tiny bit bigger, the leaves would just slide right through instead of sitting on top, and then next thing you know, it's a lake. If you've seen it, it, it becomes a lake in minutes. Mm -hmm. you no, know. we could talk to them. Okay. Fantastic. I know one of the things that you and I were corresponding about was you were out there physically trying to clear that drain. And All if you, the time. You no, know, if you and Mr. Turner are away, and I, I get it. So I, hopefully with that second catch basin, that'll alleviate some of those problems because what he was concerned about is they were away. And if, yeah, if, if we're not there. Up, and, and, right, and it's right in front of your house. Uh, yeah, and it becomes so dangerous to the the vehicles, you know. Uh, coming and going, and it be literally becomes a lake uh, it, within minutes, yeah. Is the other one that they're looking to install, Mr. Tucci, adjacent to the one that's in front of their they'll, house? They'll just double it up. They're going to double that up? Double it up. Okay. okay. It'll be a double That'd be great. Um, I mean, I would love another one, but if I can get just one more, that I'll take it, you know, okay. uh, hopefully with bigger holes. Just one comment. Yeah. You're the first person in 32 years that appreciates the noise in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You can keep going. You know, I'll take another foot if you, if you want to give it to me, so... But I do thank you for all uh, the hard work. Thank you so much. Right. Mr. Turner. Uh, good evening. Uh, Frank Turner, 201 Little Falls Road, Cedar Grove. Uh, again, I uh, want to express my thanks. And uh, the river looks uh, terrific, uh, especially around the bridge uh, where it flows past uh, the bridge. It, it looks like a whole new opening, so it's terrific. But the one question I had uh, for Mr. Uh, Mr. Tucci is just we'd mentioned the, uh, I got, uh, the rip raff or whatever. Rip raff. Uh, yeah, right. when, when will that be uh, installed? Once they have cleared everything and reestablished the banks, actually, your area will be first. We'll be rip wrapping that section near you first. Okay. And that will happen, hopefully, if weather permitting, as soon as they conclude the cleaning and desnagging. Sure. <clears throat> okay, terrific. Uh, thank you very much. Thank you. Yes, sir, please. Your name and address. Patrick Clough, 143 Little Falls Road. Good evening. Good evening. Um, I had a conversation with the guy with the uh, big machine, and uh, it was a great conversation. Good guy. 
while we're talking on my side of the river, uh, we're watching the, the guys on the other side of the river blow the leaves into the river that he was just cleaning out. Um, my suggestion is you just tell the guys not to blow the leaves into the river. You're talking about on the community, on the community, by the community the, pool? Yeah, the community pool. Mr. Tucci, he's at 143 Little Falls Road. Mm -hmm. Right. Um, it's, it's right next to the uh, tennis court. Right. I, I know will, where you are. I will sure. speak to them about that. Yep. Huh? I will speak to them about that. Yeah. I mean, mm -hmm. they, I, 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 I'm sure it's innocent on their part. They don't realize what they're doing. They shouldn't. Yeah, okay. Anyway, so I um, wanted to note that. I also went down to where Spencer's property is because I talked to him and he said, wow, you should see I built this big hole on the other side of the bridge, which is right by Spencer's property. And I said, and what did you do on this side of the bridge? He said, well, I can't do anything there because there's this huge piece of cement. The, whoever engineered the construction of that bridge actually engineered a cork. Mm -hmm. so it's a bottleneck. The bridge has to be replaced. And he said that someone named Alex. That's our township engineer. He's a, he's a township engineer. Correct. Is there any way he could be at one of these meetings? I'd like to meet the guy and get his opinion about these kinds of uh, Well, you issues. can set up a meeting. You can go right to his office. It's right down the street from where you live. We can, okay. We can have, uh, we can arrange that for a meeting with you and him. Yeah, I mean, it, it just, I, I, I don't, I don't, I, any, anybody looking at it, you go down and you look at that bridge, you see that it is maybe a quarter of the size of the river on the other side. So he, there's only so much you can do on our side of the on the Cedar Grove, Cedar Grove town side of the bridge because the bridge itself is, you know, mm -hmm. like a, the neck of a bottle. Yeah, we would have to talk to the, the county neck. of Essex on that because it's the county's bridge. So the township engineer would have to talk to the county engineer as far as any work done on the bridge. Yeah, no, I, think <coughs> it needs to, I absolutely think it needs to be replaced along those lines. I know I'm, I'm being a pest, but when I go up river to Verona, the park in Verona, where they have this beautiful park with beautiful lake, which I'm sure is completely flooded when we have floods down here. Um, and I don't know. This is this is a, this is a, a, a bit of a leap. And also behind that park is a huge golf course that drains into the park. There's no trees on the golf. I mean, you know, there's a few trees, but there's basically no trees on a golf course, and it drains into that park. And that park, I, I, I'm told, has floodgates <laughs> or something, but. And it ends up coming down the Peckman River right to, right to us. Uh, my, again, I'm not an engineer. I don't know. I'd like to talk to Alex about it. Mm -hmm. it is my suggestion is they built a, a, a reservoir, that they get rid of the park and build a reservoir. I mean, I don't know. You know, it's a, I mean, it's a, that's a major uh, well, issue. Why don't we do this? After the meeting, give me your number and I'll have Alex call you and we'll set up a meeting. Yeah. Okay. Because I mean, as I look at it, though, I don't know. Do, do you guys know how flooded it gets up towards Verona? I'm not familiar with what goes on in uh, the golf course in Verona, no. Well, not just the golf course, but I mean the houses along the Peckman. Well, that's the reason why the, this governing body is creating a joint flood board with the town of Verona to right. address issues like that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That's, and uh, that's all I got for today. <laughs> Mr. Pluff, you heard Mr. Tucci's report about yes. the, um, right by your house there, building yeah, yeah. up the banks there. So they're getting to your home. Uh, yeah, I talked to the guy about it. He's going to do his, he's going to do his best, but it, he's actually using mm -hmm. that property next to me 
as his egress and ingress. The to one in the between river. your house and the tennis courts? Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, in other words, it slopes down right, right. Into, the, right into the river. There's a, absolutely no bank there now. Mm -hmm. And where, the, where my house got flooded, and also my neighbor, uh, was from basically from the water coming from behind the tennis court, across my property, across my neighbor's property, and then back towards the river and, you know, onward towards uh, Spencer's property. Mm -hmm. But that, I mean, that has, there's no bank. I mean, I have a, you know, maybe six foot of bank that needs to be reinforced. That's got zero bank. He's going to have to put a ton of rock to build the bank. I guess that's what they're doing, Mr. Tucci, as they work their way up to yes. Mr. Pluff's home. Yes. So. Yeah. Well, they say they're going to do it. It's, right. it's going to be a major job. Mm -hmm. All right. Thank, Thank you. you. That's it. Thank you. Thank you. Anybody else wishing to be heard? Ms. Dye? <clears throat> Good evening. Good evening. Christine Dye, 49 The Glen. I actually have two items. The first one, I come before you as uh, a representative of the Board of Education. Um, a few years ago, the town council made a promise to the Board of Ed that we would receive pilot money. Um, to date, we haven't received any, and we are into our third year now of having children from the hilltop um, attend our schools. Um, this is also the third time recently that our, your attorneys have asked for information um, regarding costs. Most recently, I think it was a week or two ago. So I'm here before the council to try to find out um, what is the delay, if any, and when can we anticipate having a conversation uh, in terms of finding out the, about the pilot money and when the board will receive any? Oh, I know, uh, Ms. Dye, you had reached out to me earlier about that. We're still discussing it as a council. I know uh, Ms. Nabby had reached out to your attorney. And mm -hmm. we, still haven't, we haven't gotten that information back from Ms. Nabby to discuss. But we, 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 once we get that information back, then... Um, our attorney would get back to your attorney with the next steps, okay. which, I, I, which I relayed to you when you right. reached out to me. Right, but I'm kind of curious that mm -hmm. the, the information that was requested, I think it was a week or two ago, is the same information that we had given in the summer. So I'm just kind of wondering why the information was asked a second time. To be candid, the, my, one of my partners at the firm, uh, Matt Giacobbe, has been handling this with, uh, between the Board of Ed, right? And... Um, He's requested the information. What I can do is I can certainly pass that information on to Mr. Tucci, what we requested, what is still lacking, what's missing, and then convey that information over to you if that's okay. That'd be fine. Um, uh, along with the pilot money question, uh, my question is, are you able to say how much pilot money you've received um, to date? Mr. Tucci, do we have that information I have available? I report with me. Okay. I, can, I can get that. Okay. No problem. Okay, and then the third question regarding the pilot money. Um, has any pilot money been spent on anything um, to date? Mr. Tucci, do you have that information? Yes, it's we had acquisition of land. Uh, we acquired the property on the corner of Fairview Avenue and uh, Route 23, mm -hmm. we used pilot money. Uh, we used some of the pilot money on the acquisition of the 50 acres of the North Watershed property. Uh, that's basically all the uh, money that we've expended to date uh, regarding the pilot. And the library then hasn't received any pilot money, right? No. Okay. All right. I would just ask that if, you know, we could sort of try to come to an agreement as soon as possible. Like I said, we're in year three mm -hmm. of, uh, and it just keeps getting more expensive. Um, my second item is not uh, having anything to do with the Board of Ed, but as a taxpayer, um, so I'm putting on my taxpayer hat, again, 49 The Glen. I'd like to understand the, um, the endorsement that the council made for governor, um, just coming from a nonpartisan body, and I just want to understand why it was done and if it's been done before. Sure, I can answer that. Um, Thank you. So as a member of the council, myself or any of our council members, don't lose our rights as citizens under the First Amendment. So um, I made that endorsement as a as a resident i just happen to be a sitting mayor so that endorsement that i made was my personal decision to make um but it was not inappropriate it's not against the law um and it's something I, i've done in the past and i've been sitting here 16 years and other council members have done it as well 
Okay, I was just kind of curious because I wasn't, I didn't quite remember, at least in the last number of years, that the entire council had done it together. I, obviously, you never lose your First Amendment to, to mm -hmm. you know, your vote, neither do I. Um, that's why I was just wondering. Well, it's not so much it, together. We are all asked individually, and everybody made their own individual individual decision. Got it. Okay. Thank you very much. I appreciate your time. Thank you. Anybody else wishing to be heard? Yes, sir, please. Just your name and address, please. Yep, one second, just getting prepared. Uh, David Vissering, 27, Rose Terrace. Uh, so Ms. Stutz, did I get her last name correct? Our township clerk. Yes, yes. I just want to start with some thank yous. I'd reached out to her uh, with some questions and she responded much earlier in the morning than I was expecting. So just wanted to you know, publicly recognize, say thank you. Uh, I appreciate how quickly she got back to me. I'd also like to thank uh, Mr. Tucci and uh, Lieutenant Pumphrey. I hope I got his last name correct as well. Uh, I had some questions regarding some stop signs in my neighborhood. And both Mr. Tucci and Mr. Pumphrey took the time to explain uh, you know, why what I requested wasn't possible. So even though I'm not happy with the answer, I do greatly appreciate taking the time to explain why instead of just saying, saying an email. Mm -hmm. Uh, Lieutenant Pumphrey took probably 20 minutes out of his day to explain it on the phone. So again, just wanted to, you know, publicly state I appreciate taking the extra effort to make sure I understood why and I didn't have any That's additional why we're questions. Here. Yep, no, nope, I appreciate it. So I just wanted to take the time to say thank you. Uh, Mr. Masseri's not here today, but I wanted to thank him and Mr. Zakelli uh, a couple uh, town council meetings ago. Uh, there were some members. Uh, of the community that have brought up some questions regarding uh, taxpayer funding, you know, passing through the township as a tax collector, going to the school board and just, you know, taking the time to explain, uh, you know, how the process works and taking us, you know, just nipping that in the bud and not letting it, you know, grow into anything else. So again, you know, taking a strong stand and wanting to take the time to, you know, acknowledge that, that, you know, you know, I appreciate the time that you took to do that. Uh, so kind of picking backing off of, uh, the previous speaker, um, to understand your point about, um, endorsing the Republican candidate for governor and, you know, that's totally fine. Um, my issue is more just that there was some inaccuracies, I would say in the letter that was published. Um, so in, uh, early in the letter, uh, the group that submitted that, which included the five members of the council, stated that New Jersey had the highest per capita death ratio for COVID uh, in the U.S., which I checked the same day that the letter was published, and that's not true. New Jersey is high while uh, we're, I believe, number three in the country, uh, which understandable given how hard the New York metro area was hit uh, early in the pandemic, but just wanted to, you know, Straight up the record that that is not in fact the case that New Jersey has the highest uh, per capita death rate for COVID. Um, additionally, I think it's interesting that the council and the other signatories on the letter took the time to uh, highlight Governor Murphy not following CDC guidance in regards to the nursing homes when the candidate that you in fact endorsed is a pretty strong opponent of mass mandates, which is also CDC guidance. Uh, and there's a couple instances also where in the letter uh, there's mention made of where New Jersey as a state lists uh, in rankings compared to other states in the country, but there's no sources listed. Um, so just curious where that information came from so we can understand as a community how you base part of the reason for your endorsement is based on those reasons listed, but there wasn't a way for us to, you know, check where you got it from. Mm -hmm. So just wanted to provide that feedback. And uh, I think I'll leave it at that today, but I want to thank you for your time. Appreciate the update uh, and have a good rest of your day. Happy Halloween. Thank you. Anybody else from the public wishing to be heard? 
No. Okay. All right. Oh, before we go into executive session, I do, I forgot to mention, I would also like to call for an executive session for um, litigation. Here, okay. All right. You have to speak? I do. Okay. I do. Whereas Section 8 of the Open Public Meeting Act uh, permits the exclusion of the public from a meeting of the mayor and council in certain circumstances, and whereas the mayor and council of the township of Cedar Grove are of the opinion that such circumstances exist. Now, therefore, be it resolved by the mayor and council of the township of Cedar Grove, County of Essex, State of New Jersey, that the public shall be excluded from the discussion of any action of the executive session of the meeting of the mayor and council of November 1st, 2021. The general nature of the subject matters to be discussed is um, our contract litigation regarding Occidental chemical lawsuit, uh, potential litigation, and litigation. It is anticipated at this time that the above state of subject matter will be made public as soon thereafter as it is deemed in the public interest to do so, and this resolution shall take effect immediately. Is there a motion to approve? So moved, Mayor. Is there a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. So we're going to go into executive session now.